Hello there everyone and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 with Equestrian War in which we are playing as the Cult of Union Republic but the Cherub Terran offer. Officials from the mysterious land of Cherub Terra in the south have arrived today in our capital. Although our two nations had up till now little interactions with each other, especially with tales of Cherub Terran slave raids running wild, their ambassadors have come to us with an interesting proposal. They are very well aware of our hostility towards Hippogriff presence in Zumidia, and as they are preparing themselves for competition with Eris, they propose a temporary alliance to crush Hippogriff Threth, or Threth and cast them back into the sea. I argue that through our combined armies, we will be able to force Hippogriffs to quick and advantageous settlement to us. The debate is already raging within our ranks. On one side, Cherub Terran attitudes toward any point that doesn't follow their particular faith as well known as well as their constant slavery against the media which is supposed to be our land on the other hand their army is far superior to ours in terms of training and experience and there's no doubt their presence will aid us greatly in the common conflict can we really trust them though hmm generalissimo uh, we are junta or supremacist junta which i love supremacy and as we are trying to amend of course the constitution as well currently um the uh, current constitution states that the position of Sufrit is to be a rotating one, but this has only led to disruptive conflict and infighting up till now. But the loyalty of the warlords secured, Batrun Zaris, can finally amend the constitution and ensure that their reign lasts for the rest of their lives. So I'm not sure that if this was a good choice to make. The loyalty of all warlords must be high and their power must be negligible, or that. I made them all dangerously high just to see what would happen. So, yeah. But with this old Cherub Terran thing, uh, unlikely but highly useful ally against Hippogriffia, I don't think they're trustworthy. I really don't. And we'll still try to undermine their power base, like I said. Um, but I want to get that focus done to see what it would be like. You know, we're all learning here. Oh, motivation is nice. Infantry, yes, good. Lots of infantry, please. We need more pony power. Oh, God, no. Sufrit, now and forever. But one comment was, Long live the Republic, long live the savior of Batrun Zars. Only the military can bring order to Carth Carthage. Not Carthage, but Carthage. And nor does ever come. Sufrit, now and forever. After the establishment of Kothij, uh ruling military junta, its members originally planned that the position of supreme chief would be a rotating one. However, the resulting power struggles have proven extremely disruptive to the effective governance of the nation. Against the backdrop of this infighting, but through desires has brought prosperity to the people, consolidating central control and establishing reputation as a respected and well liked leader. In order to preserve the stability of the country, it is clear that every receiver must stand united behind a single leader. And so Batrun Zaris has come amended. The constitution to make himself suited for life and sole ruler of Kothij. This amendment, which relegates the junta or junta. To an advisory council was ratified with full approval of the warlords. Naturally, they had no objection to trusting this tremendous responsibility to such a proven, capable zebra. Since this is across the land of Joyce, the time of strife is finally behind us. Kolthag is in good hooves. Long live Batrun Zaires. Ooh, a dictator. More political power and stability. Nice. And control the media. Uh, when it comes to information presented to this average citizen, we must be ever vigilant in combating threats to the national unity. The media cannot be allowed to publish seditious anti junta content at will, and in general must be kept under the tight control of the government. The only facts worthy of public consumption are officially approved facts. Do we actually get rid of that? Oh. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm so sorry. I complained so much in the last episode about that. I was really not happy with that, but now that we got that disabled, oh, that's so nice. That is so nice. It's not even funny. So I apologize for raging or being like that. Um, for other two branches of the military next. Kothag has always relied on two primarily pillars to support it. The army and the navy. In recent years, both have been weak and nerfed severely, threatening the severe foundation of the nation. They must be restored to the former glory, so the Kothag has dominance of both land and sea once more. So, that's actually really nice. Stop trading, propaganda efforts, we can get that one. Political actions, uh, 400 political power. We, let's save our political power for now. Regional integration would not be bad either. So, getting more stability would be good, but whatever. Um, we do have Beshel Zazar. Bezel Bezel Shazar. Oh, I want to say it wrong. Ooh, reform of the economy. We don't really need that, but you know what? We'll do it anyways. The Fethara girls, the reformists. Stability, research speed, slightly more political power. Over two days, not bad. Uh, we'll do that one. Rebuild the professional army will be very good as well. Yeah, getting that 25% more organization is super important, and more army XP gain too. Oh boy. Although we've made use of mercenaries in a stop gap in recent years, their unreliability makes them unsuited to serve as the core of our army, and putting our faith in them to defend the nation will be the height of foolishness. Um, Batru and Zaret are the plan to rebuild of truly a professional army, using experienced veterans and the sacred band to train these new soldiers. Expand the dock, or Hippo and Dockyard. Hippo is a natural harbor of great strategic and economic importance. But the infrastructure currently in place, there is inadequate. It's not being utilized for our ship production as effectively as it could be. We need to construct additional dry docks and repair facilities if we're to rectify this. Uh, still only three research, three research slotterinos, but that kind of sucks. Oh. Okay, then. They join them. It might actually be worth going to war with them. Um, 
fortify the West. With the steam Storm King dead and gone, Hippogriffia represents the greatest threat to our future security. Although we have no intention of picking a fight with them, we must be prepared to defend ourselves from potential aggression. Constructing a line of new fortifications along the border of the Zumidia. will prevent a Hippogriff surprise attack and deter any cross-border assaults. So they're going to war now. The thing about this group is that you have to exhaust them. Take a claim to state. 20 days. That's not bad. We actually might be able to do that. And especially if they're attacking and stuff like that. We actually might be able to zolt and jolt in. Opening up another front. Reducing their power. We might actually be able to get over here and then take Zarantia. So that would be kind of cool if we could. In the meantime, we will stop training our ships and stuff like that. Because we have no fuel. Anything worthwhile upgrading? Meh. At least trade for one. Of course, we have like, no planes, which is really bad. But whatever. Alright, so this is probably a bad idea. But if we can blitz in there at the same time, that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, use server core, invisible state. I gotta play as a cheer up Terran sometime. The Native Affairs Commission. The Nightmare Bless Chiraptera. Uh, Imperial Frontier Forces, too. So let's see what we can do about that. Um, I don't think we have any planes, do we? Yeah, I should check before we get into the war, but whatever. Yeah. Crush Quag Quagatai. Oh, it'd be a piece. It has oh, army rivalry. Nice. Uh oh. Oh, is it just calm? Oh, no. Oh, oh, the Navy's protecting us. Great. Rebuild the professional army, yeah. Uh, replace inter-service rivalry balance with inter-service rivalry army strengthened. Interesting. Not a bad idea. Oh, we didn't even do our land auction. Oh, good God. Um, well. We're a military, very proud military tradition, so I guess superior firepower for now. Make it easy for us. I didn't even realize that we didn't have land auction yet. My bad. Oh, supply's going to be an issue here, isn't it? Oh, it's going to be a huge issue. Do the best you can for now. And really spread into Zarantia, if you can. Ooh. War propaganda would be nice. I don't really have to have that right now. Um... Oh, that'd be... Oh, Council of Theorists. Yeah, I might as well grab that right now, too, anyways. We gotta keep moving now, so that... Um, we can keep pushing. Because I don't want the Kingdom of War Zen to really fall yet. We can't really afford them to have them to fall, so... Keep pushing for now. Do the best you can. Well... Push as much as we can without supply. Oh, actually, do we have supply right here? We have a little bit. Get that one done. Pushing through here is going to be our best bet. Pushing through here maybe not, might not be our best bet. So just keep up a lot. Oh, they're actually naval invaded too. But then take a port, which is sucky. Yeah. Lessons from the storm. Blessing Nazerta. The fall of them, not bad. Well, more breakthrough would be really good. Promote new admirals. So right now, what would happen if we did this? Army dominance. Um, I kind of want to do blessings of as as Tarta. Oh, Azaz Tarta, goddess of fertility and war. Heed the prayers of your most humble and faithful followers. Your most divine blessing is necessary if you wish to smite the enemy Zonikian Zonikian civilization. Be generous and grant us a mere fraction of your sacred power. Yes, absolutely. There you go. Might be able to swim in there, yeah. Nice. Um, we're also going to grab trucks. Oh, good God, this is not good. Of course, in this piece, we'll take whatever we can. We've lost uh, 21,000. We killed off 38,000, so. Mm. Not exactly two to one, but that's not bad overall. Uh, go in. Oh. <laughs> All right, 
are still attacking us, which is not good. Financial crisis. Oh, what is this? Yo, oh, zebras across the country are in a state of panic as their once booming economy is now rapidly going bust. A new recession is upon us. It seems deregulation coupled with ease restrictions on financial and capital transactions led to greatly inflated asset prices. The resulting overheated economy is now crashing down as the bubble bursts and asset prices tumble, with the countless businesses going bankrupt overnight. The recession is already hitting Colte Carg, since serious economic hardship is spreading throughout the country. Rates of consumption and investment are plummeting, badly affecting our consumer confidence. The most devastating of all for those average citizens. Household real income is dipping sharply. One thing is certain, we're all in for a rough year. Oh, it'll get better eventually. That sucks. Alright, we're gonna push in harder probably here. Go and do that and this too. I'm definitely not gonna be successful everywhere, but you know what? We'll be successful wherever we can be. Nice. Send a contract with Ochzor. If you want to go this, please go ahead. We're going to go ahead and do Fort by the West. Blessings of Pacifica. Let's go in the dockyards. Of course, we're going to move this one next. Because right now, we are what? Army dominance. More output would be very beneficial right now, too. Very, 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 very beneficial. We out of guns? Yeah. That's what I kind of figured. Wow. Negative 44. Jesus. Uh, we can't get rid of any other one. We need more manpower too. Hmm. Extensive, real quick. Just in case. Yeah. Oh wow, the actually made a segment. Look at that. Nice. Good. Go on and hold as best you can. Supply's gonna be quite bad. Uh, once we get supply connected to here. Um, there we go. That's definitely better over there. These guys have supply somehow. I think we'll win this war. I'd be surprised if we don't. And we'd be in peace for that one. So, yeah, army modernization. It's not bad. Promote new admirals. Blessings of Zam. Oh, Zam. God of the great sea and all rivers that flow into it, heed the prayers of your most humble and faithful followers. Guide our sailors to safety and sink our foes in vicious storms. Keep the seas calm and against the game in battle. Keep your sacred rivers from drying up or flooding. Be generous and grant us a mere fraction of your sacred power. Looking a bit weak. I like it when they look weak. So they lost other stuff. We'll really focus on Zarantia. Zarantia? Zarantia. You guys actually go in at all? Definitely there. There. Not over here in the center, but whatever. Yeah, we're definitely struggling here. They can take Manerba, Midun. That would be great. Improve already. Good. Let's 
expand the dockyards. Oh, plus is a Zam. Uh, Army modernization. It's not bad. I could prefer lessons from the storm from our uh, bonus or cost reduction for a land auction. Although it's painful to remember, Batrun Zars knows that there are lessons we must learn from the extreme king's invasion, especially in regards to the importance of military air power. It'd be wise for us to study the nature of our defeat and avoid repeating the same mistakes in the future. Um, yeah, this is not bad. Is that need? Might as well. God, living in a desert. I can't imagine. Heat expert? Sure, why not? It's kind of useless, but whatever. Come on. Come on. Oh, but more manpower is very nice. Of course, if you mobilize, that's what happens. Oh, that'd be good too. Ah, there we go. Okay, so with this, we're definitely taking this tile. We're taking this stuff too. This stuff. Yeah, I'll probably give to Hippogriffia. There we go. And then crush Quag Tai. Quag Tai is a historic enemy of Coltheg. It was a Quag a Tai Khan's could have been slain for 30 dark years, and their resurgence means that our final confrontation is only a matter of time. They must be destroyed so that their horse can never threaten us again. Kotar can be core by us. Interesting. And we're going to straight to war with them. Can we do that? Oh. Lesson from the storm. Uh. Uh, although it's painful to remember that Barat's, uh, Batrun Zars know that there are lessons we must learn from the Storm King's invasion, especially in regards to the importance of military air power. It would be wise to study the nature of our defeat and avoid repeating the same mistakes in the future. Very true. Smoocher, you got lips? I want them. Go. The Great War, very nice. Yeah, crushing them. And then we have Warplan East. Huh. Got a Warplan North. Pro Operation Parroting. Makawiya. Operation Bullfighter. Trident. Finding the new Kolthag. East Gateway to Hindia, Pearl of the East, Viking Coast, the Kothegian Raj. Ooh, that sounds like fun. And also, I, I know I'm ignoring this stuff here. It's just because this you can do this almost any campaign. So, yeah. Kosufrit Zarel Zarel. Zeron Zarel. Nice. So, we'll keep doing that. We'll crush them as best we can and keep going on. Just like normal. We should be able to do this one next. Let's go straight to war with them. Cool. We want new admirals? Probably. Recent events have left us with new openings in the leadership of the Navy. We must make it a priority to fill these gaps with talented, qualified zebras. Unfortunately for us, we have identified several promising naval officers who are ideal candidates for promotion to replace the admirals who are forcibly retired. Air Force debate. The Storm King's lightning invasion plainly demonstrated the value of air power in the modern battlefield for all to see. In light of this, we clearly need deception air force, although the Army and Navy are not in complete agreement on what process role it should have. Aircraft designer. Commerce rating, that'd be kind of nice. Air speed would be pretty nice too, but uh, yeah, even though I said we can't get out of that, we'll grab this guy first. Thank you. Um, supply is probably really got awful down here, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. Deal with it for now. 
And there you go. Very nice. There's Tall Tale. Um, that's a lot of naval XP. It's pretty nice. That's almost too good for me to pass up. Really, template. I mean, we're not going to have any time to make any of these things, but whatever. And we have already shipped, so I'd rather do this one. You get almost to a day. Find out the comment was to keep the dangerously powerful warlords appeased, you just need to keep giving them more territories they expose. If you run out of provinces, don't worry, you can always conquer more. Uh, I'm guessing from what I'm seeing here, you're not getting enough political power. It seems to be deliberate game design choice to so encourage you to giving keep giving the warlords more land. Is that is a PP free way of increasing their loyalty, which is true. I, know, I apologize for complaining so much last time, but it is what it is. All right, so now can we go in and crush them from every side and angle maybe? Let's hope so. Yeah, no, it's quite nice. I love how fast we can uh, research this stuff. We're playing east. Gold is in a dire need of additional resources and labors arrival other regional powers such as Hippogriffia and Chiraptera. The east divided into weak uh, and backwards feudal nations. Provides plenty of both. The army urges us to prepare an invasion of Hindia as soon as possible before the region can consolidate. Of course, we'll be balanced, but we've got to do the Air Force debate next. So it is what it is. We've got to wait a little bit. Wow. Support, please. Thank you. Army drills okay. Army XP gain goes down. Uh, so we're using superior fire probably might as well. And then you're kind of trapped here, aren't we? We'll get him. It's gonna take a little bit of time, though. Stuff in there. Uh, 3,000 versus 77,000 losses, not bad. Of course, debate. Come on, good. Keep going. More propaganda would be nice. Yep, looking pretty good. The Shire has fallen. Sure, why not? Get a martyr if you can. We need more guns and artillery. Pretty normal. Uh, working on it. Well, we have no artillery. God dang it. Output. Really want to kill this division off, don't they? Can we get this one unlocked? Or Zena, Quagai. This empire's gone. No, they're in circlement. Nice. Zashi, yes. They really want to kill that division off. Can't blame them. But they're not going to. Liberation of Zashi. Actually, you go right there. You go right there, real quick. The role of the Air Force. 
Uh, the prospect of recruiting and combat, combat forces, aviation combat force, has ignited a fire debate within the military as to how this new service should be organized. Most generals agree that the natural application of the combat aircraft, therefore the av aviation arm of the military is to act in support of ground forces. They believe flying units should be placed under the operational control of the army commanders so that they can cooperate and effectively support our troops. On the other hoof, many admirals argue that given the importance of sea power with respect to remaining Coltheg's naval superiority, or supremacy, it is logical to place the Air Force under the authority of the Navy. Close integration would lead to maximum efficiency for naval aviation forces, most of all. They emphasize the potential for air power and coastal defense, insisting that it would only take a small number of planes to sink massive enemy battleships. Opposed to both these views, a group of visionary generals and admirals argue that if placed under the hoof of a separate branch, we risk stifling the development of the Air Force. They believe that air power is to be autonomous and controlled by zeros who understand the new technology, new tactics, and strategies, and who will not waste precious air assets trying to assist old fashioned armies and navies. In the view, our aerial warfare branch must be given autonomy to expand and grow efficiently free from outside meddling. The question lies before us what kind of air force does Coltheg need? Uh, well, I don't think we really focus on any sort of branch yet, but I always like battlefield support. An independent Air Force? Yeah. See? We, we, we're liberated. As soon as we get the Sapper done, they'll be good too. Um, yeah, Army modernization, advances in technology have been made possible. Made possible the creation of new combat vehicles that can protect soldiers as well as greatly increase their offensive capabilities. We can afford to neglect developing and incorporating these machines into our army, or else we will get left behind and play periodically for it in the next war. Pretty much. Beautiful. And of course, war plan east. Oh, Zerantia actually is it live. Oh, don't tell me they're going to want our territories back. If that's the case, I'm going to take this territory back. If they go to war with us, then I'm just going to take their territory. I'm not going to mess with that. East, Army Modernization, mm -hmm. Gateway to India. As we begin to march east, the first target that presents itself to us is a Doily Confederation. Neutralizing their native princes is the first vital step towards conquering all of India. It's imperative that we control the land as it will serve as an important staging area for our eventual conqu conquests and deeper campaigns into India. Pearl of the East! The final most important piece needed to secure the East is Sambad and the capital of Bakkal, the largest and wealthiest city in India. Seizing along with all the prizes, art and treasures would be a tremendous boon in Cold Lake's prestige. Now, this one was auto-completed, which I kind of figured would happen, so... Establish, uh, Naval Infantry Corps. Occupying and asserting control of our overseas territories will require specialized naval infantry. Armed sailors are simply not up to the task in conducting expeditionary and amphibious operations, and so a new service branch will be established to serve those critical military roles in amphibious warfare force. Yes, and we are at war with Samba, but that's okay. The economy recovers. It's only a matter of time, but after pouring over the latest financial indicators, our economists are confident to claim that the recession which once gripped the nation has officially ended. Not only that, but they see the beginnings of a post-recession boom. That shows countless new businesses are being opened. While, and while household incomes are increasing and unemployment is decreasing, one thing is certain, happy days are here again. The economy is doing laughably good. Ha-ha. Awesome. Oh, they're doing force defense. Good idea. Um, the Viking Coast. Our next tar target is Chitta, a nation which is fairly well developed and also boasts an impressive productive capacity. Dealing with them will be strategically vital, as complete control of the northern coast is necessary if we wish to assert a military dominance in the region. That's something we really want to do. So, uh... Krakow? Is the water? Sure, why not? Losses? Less than 1,000 versus 41,000. Pretty good. I'll start with these guys, actually. I have a lot of manpower. Up to 30 divisions, and we have 25 recent, relatively good divisions, so I'm not super worried then. Oh, Sandbar's still over there. Oh, okay then, that's not good. Um, if that's the case, it was awkwardly split up. That's not good for us. Uh, it's going to take a while to do the Viking Coast then, which does suck. That sucks we can't do that one at the first. 
Um, begin recruitment campaigns. No zebra has become an increasingly chaotic place in time in recent years, making national defense more important than ever. Ensuring our future security will require substantial buildup uh, than ever. The army is hungry for more willing soldiers, so nationwide propaganda campaigns need to be launched to incentivize zebras to sign up. Army service rival with army strength and nice. Um, over here, where's Stratocracy? Yuntas, military republics, and military dictatorships. Peace is viewed as a sign of weakness. Elder Sea Agreement. Oh, well, we can't do that one for a while, too. That kind of sucks. Cool. Even more. More, 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 more. When you're done, more. Might as well build, finish building that up. You might as well at this point. Cool. Alright, we can't do anything here now, which sucks. Whatever. Supplies are pretty bad. Okay, then. Hidden, huh? Don't do that, anyways. Um, begin recruitment campaigns, copy Wing Bardi and Torpedo Designs. Wing Bardi has been at the forefront of torpedo development for many years now, thanks to our shared history of military cooperation. It would not be too difficult to copy uh, some of their torpedo designs. Of course, they might not be exactly pleased with this, but a few modifications, no Griff will ever know. Navy modernization. The balance of powers of sea is changing, and naval warfare itself is changing alongside with it. If we wish to become a first ship power in a region, we must adapt to these changes and modernize our navy. To this end, we will begin the process of upgrading warship designs without delay. Cool. And military research and development. Our research uh, efforts suffered a bit of setback when purging the scientists, but we finally amassed the resources and personnel needed to establish a new department specializing in military research and development. This department will be responsible for the development of emerging technolo technologies to support the needs of national security. Experimental weaponry. Uh, past technological breakthroughs have led to advancements that forever change the face of the battlefield. As we progress beyond the frontiers of current knowledge, no, we will no doubt uncover all kinds of amazing discoveries that can be applied towards warfare. We should direct all our research and development undertakings towards experimenting with and developing new types of weapons. Which would be great. And of course, the Carthaginian Raj. Um, glorious triumph. Bhatra and Zars has led us to total victory, leaving us the sole masters of India. However, conquest and administration are two different things altogether. As someone decide how to organize new lands, ruling over such a large population of deer will be difficult but necessary in order to take advantage of the valuable resources in that territory. Alright everyone, so I have Kant's commands on because we can't do this one unless we have inter-service rivalry army dominance, which kind of sucks because we completed this path, but then we can't do this path, which kind of is, eh. But, well, we've already read this one, so let's go and do that and divide the spoils. Thanks to the brilliant leadership of Batrun Zars, Kolkthaik has reached a new heights of power that few would have even dared to dream of during the dark days of chaos and upheaval. Our conquest is finally complete. After countless battlefield victories and each more glorious than the last, all of India now lies subjugated before us. A truly massive economy, along with all the riches of its land, are now open to control and exploit. 
However, oh, this great victory has left us in a predicament. We must understand how exactly to administer the Indian territories. The simple reality is permanent occupation will be an extremely difficult prospect. Maintaining order in such a vast and unfamiliar territory is a challenge all on its own. And in addition, there's no doubt that the local deer would not be happy about being ruled over directly by the very zebras who invaded their homeland. As an alternative, some of the government proposed consolidating India into a single colony to make things more rational and efficient. The subject state would be managed by willing deer and power to rule India in our stead. A solution would definitely be better at keeping the local population in check, but ensuring the loyalty of our partners might be a problem. When it comes to extracting what we need from the territory, can our proxies really be trusted not to place their own interests? over those of the Kothake. Clearly, neither option is ideal, and any restructuring possesses new problems of its own. On the other hand, we can just leave the things they are and continue on the current course. Direct rule from Kothake. I like that a lot. That's not bad. You get some more daily compliance. That's pretty strong. I like that a lot. Savage Colonial Subject State. Governation is fine. I like that one more. I do not like this one. But we're going to do this one anyway just because I want to see if we have a unique focus tree. We don't lose that much uh, industry either, and led by Ab... Zatart Barak. Okay. Path to modern society. So there's a generic focus tree. I just want to see if this was a normal focus tree or not, but I think that's pretty much where we're going to leave it here, everybody. Not bad. We're done with the focus tree for the most part. Um, Wing Barty did die, but you know, whatever. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, though, and the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of uh, your day.